Ladies and gentlemen, if we'd be seated, please, we're going to start our ceremony. Good evening. It is my pleasure to welcome you to our community salute to service. I am Dr. Brian Henry, superintendent of the Waynesville R6 School District. I want to thank all of you for being here this evening for this special occasion. We typically enter our gyms as rivals. However, tonight on this court, we are united as Americans and are here to show our support and appreciation for those joining the military. Would you please rise as the future members of our military, representing multiple schools from throughout Missouri, parade into our gym. Please remain standing for the presentation of the colors by the Waynesville JROTC Color Guard and the playing of our national anthem by the 399th Army Band Quintet.
Thank you. You may be seated. Based on our research, we believe this is the first community salute to service in the state of Missouri. To commemorate this occasion, joining me on stage this evening are Governor Michael Parson and Major General Donna Martin, who will be both formally introduced later in our program. In addition, we have Colonel Ralph Rizzo, Jr. from the United States Marine Corps, Lieutenant Nicholas Gegg from the U.S. Navy, and Lieutenant Colonel Josh Aldridge from the United States Air Force. Please join me in a round of applause for our guests. Students in the audience this evening, we have mayors from communities throughout South Central Missouri, two civilian aides to the Secretary of the Army, Fort Leonard Wood leaders, aides from our offices of our United States representatives and senators, officials from the Missouri State Government, area school board members, and Missouri's Commissioner of Elementary and Secondary Education, Dr. Margie Van Dieven. They are here to honor you for your willingness to raise your hand to serve and protect our great nation. The focus of tonight's ceremony is on you, the students who will be our next generation of military and civilian leaders. Providing opening remarks this evening will be Missouri's 57th governor, Michael L. Parson, who has more than 30 years of experience in public service. Governor Parson previously served as the 47th Lieutenant Governor of Missouri. He was elected Lieutenant Governor on November 8, 2016, after claiming victory in 110 of Missouri's 114 counties and receiving the most votes of any Lieutenant Governor in Missouri history. Governor Parson served the people of the 28th Senatorial District in the Missouri Senate from 2011 to 2017. He served in the Missouri House of Representatives from 2005 to 2011. Governor Parson also served as the Sheriff of Polk County from 1993 to 2005 and served six years in the United States Army. I believe he's a, a military policeman, too. Is that right, General? Okay. Please join me in welcoming Governor Mike Parson. Thank you very much, and what an honor to be here tonight. Uh, Dr. Henry, thanks for the introduction, and uh, General Martin, uh, just an honor to sit beside you uh, and what you do for the military and for Fort Leonard Wood. Uh, when I was asked to come over here and speak tonight, it wasn't a very tough decision for me to come over here uh, to speak to you young men and women tonight, and that's really who I'm going to be speaking to tonight and why I think it's so important uh, the, the next step you're going to take and what it means for the country and what it means for the people here tonight. But I know uh, Representative Lynch, I see him out there, some other dignitary, Margie from the state, uh, so many dignitaries, so I'm not going to try to mention them all, but I want to thank everybody for what they've done. And i got to tell you guys, uh, being an old sergeant when I was in the army, it's kind of nice to sit up here for all this brass uh, up here tonight. I got, I got to tell you that one, one of the most fun things that happened when I first become governor uh, when you're governor of the state of Missouri, you are the commander-in-chief of the National Guard uh, here in the state of Missouri. And I got introduced to that my first 30 days. They said, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the commander-in-chief of the National Guard. And I was still trying to learn how to be governor. And I thought, great, I wonder who that is. I get to meet him at our first event. So uh, then they said, no, that's you going up on the stage a little bit. So you recruit to young men and women out here. I'm going to give you a little gray-haired advice tonight from an old guy that you were started in basic training in Fort Leonard Wood, Missouri, not too far from here is where I started out. Uh, but one thing I want to tell you, just some kind of secrets to the military a little bit that uh, a lot of these people up here in uniform won't tell you. Some will, but I'm going to share a little truth with you. One of the first things they'll tell you is be careful what you volunteer for. <laughs> Believe me, be careful what you volunteer for. One time I was in formation as a private, and they said they were needing something, someone that had a driver's license. Being kind of a farm boy at heart, I thought I could drive about anything there was to drive, and I thought, okay, if it's got a throttle and a clutch, and I didn't even really need a brake, I'm your guy. So they said, but everybody said, don't volunteer. 
So I decided, well, I'm going to volunteer because I can drive something in the military. So I volunteered and I took that one step forward. They said, Private Parson, you're assigned to the barracks tonight, to the officer's barracks. I said, well, what am I going to be driving around in the officer's barracks tonight? So for the rest of the evening, once I got there, I run a floor buffer the rest of the evening. Uh, was my first episode of driving in the military. So believe me, be careful what you volunteer for in the military. You know, I was uh, 19 years old, served two tours of duty overseas uh, when I went in the service. And it was the first time I really realized what being a public servant was all about. And in, in the small town where I came from, there was two United States of America flags that flew in that little town. One was over the post office and one was over to school. And we said the Pledge of Allegiance every morning uh, when I went to school. But I will tell you, all of you that are here tonight, I did not understand the true meaning of the Pledge of Allegiance and the flag of the United States of America, the one we just saluted not just a few minutes ago, until I wore the uniform of the United States military. I did not. I did not understand the significance of it. But what I soon learned was the importance of wearing the uniform really wasn't about me wearing the uniform. And for many of the men and women that are here tonight in uniform, there's a time that we wear the uniform, but what we really give the opportunity to wear that uniform was, was for the people that wore it before us. The people that wore it and what they represented for our country and what it meant and the sacrifices they made so that many of us here tonight could wear that uniform, the uniform you're going to soon wear one of these days, and you're going to understand what honor, integrity means, what freedom really means, and what sacrifices people make. And you're going to make sacrifices for people you'll never see, you'll never know, and you'll never meet. But what you will do is you will find a tradition that was handed down to our country by our forefathers. When they first took independence, when they first realized what freedom is about, and everybody that served this country before you men and women did, you young people that are here tonight, some paid the ultimate sacrifice for us all to be here tonight. Truly for all of us to live the American dream, if you want to really look at it. Because I can tell you, every one of you that are here tonight, and these soldiers will tell you that, these officers will tell you that, the only way that we live the American dream is what people are willing to do for our country. That's the only way. And for the parents, family members, and people here to support these young men and women, that's what will be your calling to support them that's there tonight that didn't serve. Less than 6% of the people in this country serve in the armed forces. You're going to be in a small majority of people that serve this country. But the only way you preserve the American dream is for your service to the country. And because generations before you have given you that opportunity, and if you truly want to live the American dream, it's about what your parents done. It's about what your grandparents done. And I can take it all the way back to our forefathers in our country of what they done to give us all the privilege to be here tonight and what people have sacrificed to our country and what it truly does mean to say the Pledge of Allegiance what it means when the flag of the United States is presented in front of you, what that means. You're going to have that opportunity, each and every one of you that are here tonight, to continue that sacrifice, to continue the American dream, so somebody else can live it after you. That's why service to country is so important. It's why honor is so important. It's why integrity is so important. And if you wear that uniform, when you put it on, you know that very few people get to wear that uniform. Today at the state capitol, before I come over here, I had the opportunity to give an award to a 100-year-old World War II veteran, a Silver Star recipient. And if you don't understand what's a Silver Star and a Purple Heart and those accommodations mean and for what they mean in his lifetime, and if you'll just sit for just a minute and think of what our country's been through in 100 years, what people have went through and what people have sacrificed for all of us to be here tonight. That's who we are as Americans. It's who we are as Missourians. It's who we are. It's what we stand for. That's why when we do talk about the pledge, the flag, the star-spangled banner, it's why we start off sometimes with a prayer. 
It's why our families, the people who have served this country, why our families have stood beside us when we're overseas and them wondering what's going to be happening over there. What's going to be happening to you? Are you safe or are you not safe? It's why America is so proud. It's why America is who we are. It's why everybody in the world believes in America. And the people that don't believe in who we are, then they have it coming to them someday for their beliefs. And when they try to destroy us and they try to hurt us, it'll be up to you to stand up for all Americans. Because the one thing I do know when people serve this country, regardless whether it's a popular conflict or it's not, it's about people at home, people here in the United States of America, giving 100% support to the men and women that have served this country. And there is no exceptions to that. Because they did what they took an oath to do. These young men and women that sit down here before us tonight will be challenged that same way. It is our job to support them 110% of the time when they're wearing their uniforms. And I guarantee you this. This governor of the state of Missouri will stand behind you every day 110% of the time for your service to the United States of America. Congratulations. It is a honor and privilege to be the 57th governor of the state of Missouri. God bless you. God bless Missouri. And God bless the United States of America. Thank you very much for having me here tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Parson, for your remarks and for your military service as well. Next, I would like to introduce Major General Donna Martin. Major General Donna Martin is the Commanding General for the United States Army Maneuver Support Center of Excellence and Fort Leonard Wood. In this capacity, she oversees the development of capable and adaptive leaders and warriors. Major General Martin is the lead in total Army engineer, chemical, military police, and maneuver support capability development, providing combatant commanders critical maneuver support skills and tools necessary for mission success across a range of military operations. General Martin has served in the Army for 30 years and took command at Fort Leonard Wood on August 28, 2018. Previously, she served as the Chief of the Military Police Corps and Commandant of the Military Police School at Fort Leonard Wood, where she oversaw the training and development of military police soldiers and leaders. Please join me in welcoming our keynote speaker, Major General Donna Martin. I have a fan club over there. <laughs> wow, and good evening, everyone. Governor Parson, thank you, sir, for joining us and participating in this exceptional event this evening. I would also like to recognize our Missouri State Commissioner of Education, Dr. Margie Van Dieven. Your attendance tonight signifies the priority you give to service to this country. Thank you for joining us. I would also like to give a very special thank you to Dr. Brian Henry, Superintendent of Waynesville School District. Dr. Henry has run full throttle making this event occur. He is your number one fan. He is so proud of all of you who are making the decision to serve this nation. Let's show Dr. Henry, Governor Parson, and Commissioner Van Dieven our full appreciation for their presence and participation tonight. I would also like to thank all of our community leaders who, are, who have supported this event through hashtag fill the gym. It's still my, it stills my heart to see so many people join these exceptional students as they mark this significant milestone in their lives. So students, have you, if you haven't already figured this out, you're a pretty big deal. Tonight 
is about you. Tonight, we celebrate you. We say thank you for joining the less than 1% of Americans who serve and sacrifice in defense of this great nation. Parents, family members, and friends, what a great time this is for you and for your families. Thank you for everything you have done from the day they were born. To get your students to this point, you set their base foundation through the lessons that you taught at home, through your family values of patriotism, moral character, and selfless service. These things have allowed your student to recognize the incredible opportunity to pay back the privilege to live in this great land by serving in the greatest armed forces in the world. Our nation's veterans represent the best of America. Generation after generation, men and women have answered the call to defend our country and our freedom facing danger and uncertainty with uncommon courage. They make tremendous sacrifices by leaving their families to serve throughout the homeland and in combat, contingency and home humanitarian operations worldwide. Our heroes have always relied on their families for strength and support. Serving alongside our men and women in uniform, our spouses, siblings, parents, and children who personify the ideals of patriotism, pride, resiliency, service above self, and honor. They endure the hardships and uncertainty of mul multiple relocations, extended training, and deployments because of their ad admirable devotion to our country and a loved one in uniform. President Ronald Reagan said, America's debt to those who would fight for her defense doesn't end the day the uniform comes off. Our nation's veterans fulfilled their duty to this country with brave and loyal service. It is our moral and solemn obligation to demonstrate to them our continued gratitude, unwavering support, and meaningful encouragement. If you are a veteran or of any service, please stand if you can to be recognized. Thank you. So parents, I've got to ask you though, what do you think? Have you noticed a change in your students since they made this decision? Do you see a new confidence in their attitude? Do they walk just a little taller? Or are they maybe just a little bit more courteous than they were before? Or does it seem as though they've matured more than you could have imagined? In the days and weeks and months ahead, your student will be taught confidence and they will be shown that they can accomplish anything that, and things that they never thought were possible. So I would like to thank the educators, district leaders, counselors, and principals who are with us here tonight. It takes patience and perseverance to guide, direct, and mentor high school students. We know you are passionate about the success of these young men and women, and we also know you are proud of all they are about to accomplish, both personally and professionally. And while students may complain about the long days of high school, you were up long before them, and you were still at work long after students went home. We owe a debt of gratitude. Ladies and gentlemen, could you please Join me in a round of applause for these professionals in the field of education who have led these students through the last four years and molded them into the brave young people we see standing before us today.
family and friends, while you will always worry about your student when they can't be right there by your side, you can be assured that they will be highly trained and won't just have a job, they will have a career. They will be a part of an honorable profession, taking part in some of the most respected efforts in the world. They will make a living, have safe and secure places to live around the world, and they will have solid benefits like medical, dental, and life insurance plans. And they will even earn money for retirement and to further their education. They are becoming a member of a very elite team. They're becoming a part of history. And you should be proud that they had the courage to leave the comfort of their surroundings to experience the adventures all over the world that come with military service. They have chosen to be a part of something bigger than themselves. They will go on from here to their basic combat training units and then maybe to another location where they will learn technical skills, gain leadership experience, and learn to become a valued member of a team, gaining skills and knowledge that they will have for their entire life. To the students making this commitment, congratulations on successfully completing the first significant milestone along your journey. You will remember your counselors and teachers. You will remember what they taught you, how they encouraged you and led you to find your deepest inner strength, to achieve when you may have thought it not possible. You will likely remember the names of those professionals for the rest of your lives. Just a few months ago, you were probably wondering, what's next? You probably had friends or relatives who looked at you like you were crazy when you told them that you, were you had decided to join the military. That is because they do not understand that you are truly unique, that you are doing something that less than 1% of the people in our nation are doing, which is to wear the uniform in the armed service of our nation. And they did not understand the history the heritage and the proud tradition of service members who have worn the uniform of the United States military. This is unlike any other career in America. First of all, where else in America could you leave school with very little or no work experience and with nothing other than to will to learn a will to serve, and a belief that you can make a difference. Where else in America can you show up and say, I am here, I am eager, I am physically fit, I care about my health and fitness, I live by a moral code, and I will always do what's right. Where else in America can you show up at someone's door and say those things and be told, welcome to our team. We will train, never let you fail, and you are automatically a brother or sister. I'll tell you where in the armed forces of the United States. There will always be service rivalry, rivalries, and we poke fun at each other, but no one else can. We are forever bonded in our mission to defend this great country. So congratulations on making a decision that you will never regret. regret. You've chosen a profession where we will pay you a decent, honest day's salary, where we will ensure that you have adequate housing and food. We will ensure that you have proper clothing and equipment. We will give you money towards your future. We will pay you and for your direct family members to receive some of the finest health care. All of this while earning money for college and advanced degrees, as well as an opportunity to see the world. I have served in the Army for almost 32 years now. And never once have I heard someone say, I'm sorry that I joined the military. But I can not even begin to tell you the number of times that I've heard people say, my biggest regret is that I did not stay in the military. It was the best time of my life. Students, you are the next generation of guardians of our founding principles. Your lives will forever be changed in a positive way. 
welcome to our team. Congratulations on achieving the milestone of graduation and then entry to the service. I am proud to serve with you in the most powerful and professional armed forces in the world, and I wish you the best of luck in all your future endeavors. May God bless you, and may God continue to bless the United States of America. Thank you. Thank you, General Martin, for your outstanding keynote address. We appreciate your ongoing service to our nation, and I would ask that you remain up here at the podium, and Governor Parson, would you please join us? On behalf of the Waynesville R6 School District, I now present the exclusive Waynesville R6 School District coin to you, Governor Parson. And of course to you, Major General Martin. Would you please give them one more round of applause? <laughs> I would now like to invite Colonel Williams to the podium to announce the names of those joining the military. Uh, will all those students joining the Army please come forward as directed by our ushers, followed by the Marine Corps, Navy, and Air Force. Yes, after I announce your name. Benjamin Pullman, Waynesville High School, United States Army ROTC. <laughs> Liam Welch, Waynesville High School, United States Army National Guard. Thomas Bai, Kabul High School, United States Army. <laughs> Joshua Carlton, Camdenton High School, United States Army. Corbin Kreider, Steelville High School, United States Army. Caleb Dykus, Steelville High School, United States Army. Karina Dittman, Bell High School, United States Army. Corey Fries, Crocker High School, United States Army. Ethan Gann, Crocker High School, United States Army. Oh 
Nick Greening, Waynesville High School, United States Army. Aaron Hendricks, Bell High School, United States Army. Tate, Hall, Tate Holloman, Richland High School, United States Army. Alec Horniak, Waynesville High School, United States Army. Sean Jensen, Lakeway High School, United States Army. Thor Mummer, Waynesville High School, United States Army. Clayton Oliver, Newburgh High School, United States Army. Nathaniel Reynolds, Waynesville High School, United States Army. Ethan Rutledge, Bell High School, United States Army. Devin Warren, Waynesville High School, United States Army. Jonathan Inman, Lakeway High School, United States Army. <laughs> Timothy Barrick, Lebanon High School, United States Army National Guard. Allison Church, Lebanon High School, United States Army National Guard. <laughs> Catalina Dickinson, Waynesville High School, United States Army National Guard. Michael Fleshute, Lakeway High School, United States Army National Guard. <laughs> Elias Hash, Lebanon High School, United States Army National Guard. Christian Hatch, Lebanon High School, United States Army National Guard. Austin Johnson, Lebanon High School, United States Army National Guard. Cody Morgan, Waynesville High School, United States Army National Guard. The last name is Lee Apollo. Lee Apollo. Lee. 
Austin Mulatello, Lebanon High School, United States Army, National Guard. Andrew Owens, Lebanon High School, United States Army, National Guard. Danielle Shoemate, Lebanon High School, United States Army National Guard. <laughs> Michael Treadway, Waynesville High School, United States Army National Guard. Andrea Trudell, Waynesville High School, United States Army National Guard. Larry Wagner, Lebanon High School, United States Army National Guard. Dylan Ziegenbein, Lebanon High School, United States Army National Guard. <laughs> Taylor Zinn, Lebanon High School, United States Army National Guard. Andrew Berkby, Rolla High School, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Kai Byram, Waynesville High School, United States Marine Corps. Cameron Dominguez, Waynesville High School, United States Marine Corps. Number five, Cameron. Trinity Garcia, Waynesville High School, United States Marine Corps. Taylor Handline, Waynesville, excuse me, Lakeway High School, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Kyle Keyes, Waynesville High School, United States Marine Corps. Chris Morgan, Camdenton High School, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Keegan Roberts, Lebanon High School, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Taylor Russell, Vienna High School, United States Marine Corps. Jacob Smith, Lebanon High School, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> Leonard Soto, Waynesville High School, United States Marine Corps. Gerald Wall, Lebanon High School, United States Marine Corps. <laughs> 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 
Morgan Wilson, Salem High School, United States Marine Corps. Maximus Cordova, Waynesville High School, United States Navy. Virginia Hunter, Waynesville High School, United States Navy. Billy Joe Long, Lakeway High School, United States Navy. <laughs> Kyle Pendleton, Waynesville High School, United States Air Force. Ivy Pokai Gui, Waynesville High School, United States Air Force. <laughs> Chase Schreckengoss, Lebanon High School, United States Air Force. Connor Shaw, Lakeway High School, United States Air Force. <laughs> Charles Shelton, Plato High School, United States Air Force. Chandler Whittle, Crocker High School, United States Air Force. Hunter Williams, Salem High School, United States Air Force. Congratulations to each and every one of you for making a commitment to serve our country. Let's give them all one more round of applause. We now invite you to witness the award-winning Waynesville JROTC Tiger Battalion's Armed Exhibition Team.
They are outstanding, thank you. What a great performance. Next, the 399th Army Band will perform the Armed Forces Medley. As the Armed Forces Medley is performed, we invite students, veterans, and those currently serving to please stand as your respective branch song is played. Thank you. 
Thank you for attending the first Community Salute to Service. Will everyone please stand as our students who have raised their hand to defend our country exit the building. Following their exit, we invite you to join us for cake and congratulate them at the back of the gymnasium. Thank you. Thank <clears> you.